Something in the way she moves Attracts me like no other Everybody, hope you're doing well. It's Doug. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how much progress you can make over, say, three months when singing a song. It doesn't have to be three months, but I'm just using that as a time frame for this song which I covered, which was Something by the Beatles. Now, I took a lot of videos while um, learning this song, and I can actually show you what I improved and show you a very realistic view of how you can improve a song, how much you can actually improve it and basically the thought processes that I use to actually successfully do a live cover of it. If you haven't seen my cover yet, I'll put the link here, somewhere on the screen. And actually, the whole journey with this song started back in July. I was actually with Phil Mafarage, and we were doing a vocal lesson in person, and I shot a video of that. And I thought in that moment, hmm, I need to pick a song. And I had been kind of just i uh, messing around with that song. I remember I learnt the chords and was just singing it along, but I didn't plan on doing a cover. And I chose that song to use in our lesson to get some advice because it's really great to sing ballads because ballads actually have a more dynamic range than, say, a rock piece or a metal song. You know what I mean? Like, it's got more loud and soft dynamics, which is obviously um, really, really beneficial to train for the voice and actually quite necessary. So, after we chose that, um, I went ahead and we did the lesson together, so why don't I just show you how I got trained with that song here. Don't wanna leave now You said I believe in how Still try You said I believe You said I believe You don't, said don't, don't grip on the S. Give You said It's just in the tongue You said You said you said I believe in how Try to, try to put your jaw along it. So that was back in late July. Now after that, I didn't really stay consistent playing that song. I rarely played it, it wasn't something that I was currently practicing. Because like I said, I only used that for the lesson just to get some advice on how to do something, you know, with the singing voice. I was just using it as an example. So, fast forward to September 18th. And I remember being in my room, I printed out the lyric sheet, and I thought, oh, I might just mess around with this song. And funnily enough, because I did not practice the things that Phil showed me, the tensions that had been arising in the lesson just arise again. And you probably know, as a singer, if somebody gives you vocal advice and you don't take it, the issues are just going to come back from the past, like they're not going to be solved. So. Here is where I kind of picked up this piece and I realized, damn, there's a lot of tension that's coming up and, you know, I was going quite light in the sound and I think I also didn't know how I was sounding, like it sounded very different in my head than compared to the recording. So have a listen to this. I would say the biggest issue here is just how light and quiet it is and how much tension there was on my neck. So have a listen to this in the throat. Something in the way she moves Tracks me like no other lover Something in the way she woos me Don't wanna leave her now No, I believe in how So the first issue that I had, and actually I kind of deceived myself, is that in my head it sounded very loud. 
it wasn't really. The only loud part was that part where it says, you know I believe in how. So have a listen to that. You know I believe in how. I didn't realise how almost uh, dynamically different it was to the rest of it. It just sounded like 25% deeper, but it really wasn't. It's about <laughs> two times deeper and two times more powerful than the rest of it. So, like I said, I was kind of deceiving myself. I didn't have um, the awareness and I did not hear in my own head how I really sounded. And that was kind of what led me to go on the path of being like, okay, I'm going to actually cover this song and start working on it. If I just rewind for a second and show you what Phil was trying to show me, you know, all the way back in late July. <laughs> you said, it's just in the tongue. You said, you said, you said I believe in how. Try to, try to put your jaw longer. You said I believe in how. Spain. I was thinking at the time when I went back and watched the video of us training, like, why is he making me go so deep? Like, I don't understand. And it wasn't that I didn't trust him, but I was a bit confused. I was thinking, why, why is he going so deep? The song is not designed to be like that. But I didn't realize that my issue was stemming from not having that depth and not having that power and support that I needed to really hold the weight of this song. It is a high-pitched song, whether you believe so or not. I guess it's a bit subjective. I really think it's quite a high-pitched song. It stays up there the whole time and when you're up that high you actually need quite a lot of support to just even get the voice to work properly, you know what I mean? Like if you're down here, you said I believe and how, you don't really need to actively support it, but if you're up there, you said I believe and how, there's a bit more of an edge that you need to lean into, you know what I mean? Like, um, I've really got to kind of think about what I'm doing. I can't just relax and, um, if, if I just laid back and was like, You said I believe. See, I even got the pitch wrong because of that. You said I believe. It all gets stuck in the throat, you know? So, like I just said, you've got to be more active when you get up a bit higher. We're going to fast forward a bit to this video, which I recorded about a week, I think, before I actually did the final cover take. And it was about, you know, a week before I did the cover that I started being like, okay, I'm ready to record this. You can hear that what I learned is that I balanced a good um, amount of the power, but was still able to retain that lighter sound that I was wanting in the sound. So it wasn't coming out all deep and operatic, but it was a good balance of having enough power to get the sound to work in the way that I wanted the tone to sound. And also... Um, having that lighter edge to it, which keeps it sounding really nice and sweet. So, have a listen to this. Something in the way she moves That tries to be like no other lover Something in the way she moves me Don't So you can see after the few months of training, I wasn't really going crazy with the training. I was just kind of picking up the song and working on my sticking points and my issues. And yeah, I was able to compress the sound to be more like this. So what I'm saying with my hands is that before the sound was like a very soft tone, like, you know I believe in how, you know I, it like had a big jump to it. Now what I've done is I've compressed the tone so that the power is at all like five out of 10 or 6 out of 10 in terms of power, instead of being like 3 out of 10 in terms of power soft, and then 10 out of 10 in terms of power heavy. It's just a much nicer, clearer, more consistent tone. So now if we skip all the way to the version where I'm performing, you can see that I actually got a really nice balanced tone, um, subjectively of course, but I got a really nice balanced tone to work, and I was able to control it, and it just sounds very nice, you know what I mean? It's a nice pleasing tone. Something
Now you'll see a week later when I decided to go out and cover it that I actually did get a nice balance of a nice soft uh, sweet tone but it's still grounded with that power and like I said I'm not having to force up the weight too much or anything like that it's just all this this nice balanced tone at like a 5 or 6 out of 10 in terms of power volume I, I really hope you understand what I mean when I say 5 or 6 out of 10 I mean like there's a scale 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it goes up like that, and I'm saying that the power that I'm using is at about a 5 or a 6 to my ear. So just to recap, the lesson I had with Phil was in late July. Then I decided to cover it just in my bedroom, you know, with the lyric sheet on September 18th. And then my performance of it was on December 14th. So the only time I was actively practicing it was from September to December. And there was even a month in there where I was not very focused on it because... I didn't have the intention of doing a YouTube cover until mid-November and then it was after that where I decided to keep recording my voice and what I kept hearing is that I was going way too soft in it really I kept going so soft that it wouldn't engage properly so it was going to about 3 out of 10 in terms of power and it just wasn't cutting it and I couldn't hear it because in my head it sounded like it was like a 6 or a 7 in terms of the power but I was wrong when we're trying to progress with a song, like specifically improving just a song, there are so many vocal issues that can come up that we could either be aware or unaware of, and let's just put it in the space right now. So let's think about it. You could be going too soft. That was one that I had a problem with. You could be going too powerful. You could be going too dopey, too much of a deep sound. You could be going too whiny. You could be going too breathy. Your larynx might be jammed up. Your larynx might be jammed down. You might be singing directly from the throat. You might be singing directly into the nose and it's creating a weird sound which sounds very blocked. You might be singing off pitch. You might be singing off rhythm. You might be singing off pitch and off rhythm. You might be straining on certain notes and smoothly singing on other notes. You might be getting into the mix in some notes and then shouting on other notes. You might be... You know, <laughs> the list goes on and on. There are so many different vocal issues which can come up. Like, even just thinking now, some more came to me. Issues in your speaking voice might be showing up in the song you're trying to sing. Your accent might affect your singing voice. Your The fact that you are allergic to some sort of food might be affecting your singing voice. The fact that you're smoking. Like, there's so many issues. So, so, so many issues. And... The thing is, you've got to try and diagnose them either by yourself or, you know, with some help. I think the best solution to finding what those issues are for your voice when you're trying to train a song would actually be to understand how your voice works. Now, this can be very tricky, but I would like you to try and really be observant of your experiences in your voice. So, you know, when you go to record a song, what happens when you go more powerful? What happens? Seriously, does it break? Does your pitch just keep getting higher and higher? You know, you might have different experiences to someone else. Actually, you definitely will have a different experience for someone else. You need to start to understand how your voice works. Like, personally, me, I know that when I go very heavy in the voice, it doesn't grit up naturally. It's just something that doesn't ha naturally happen. Maybe it's my technique right now, but I also feel like my voice is a bit of a softer voice type than most. So that's what I mean about developing a relationship with how it sounds. So that's the root issue of not being able to identify what problems you have in your voice. You know, you need to develop a stronger relationship with how you understand it. But I can give you a very practical tip right now. I would say try to choose a song with an artist you think really does have good vocal technique and does do a good vocal performance on the song. You want to choose a song where, you know, you listen to the singer and you're really wowed by the technique. And I would say that you can use it as a reference track, you know what I mean? Like, really listen to him and be like, damn, is he going more powerful here? Is he going lighter here? Is he using a more nasal sound there? Is he using a darker sound on this sort of phrase? Really, really focus your ear in, and I think that you'll, you'll really find that you'll make much more progress using your ear and dialing in the different sounds that a different singer will do than just picking up the song and just training it. So that was the first thing I wanted to outline on what I improved. 
going heavier in the sound. And don't think that it was just as simple as just going from something in the way to something in the way. Because as you get louder, um, different words sound very, very, very different. So let me show you an example. If you sing something in the way she moves. That was a good example. If you sing the word she, if you're not ready and you don't understand how the E vowel is meant to resonate, you can make so many mistakes. It might get too tight. Some, and if you try to go heavier, something in the way she, it might do that. So you see that just trying to go heavier opens up a whole other can of worms on what issues you need to solve. So what I had to do was sing the song, something in the way she moves. I had to really, really focus and train myself to always open up the jaw on that she. Because when I was singing it light, something in the way she, I could do whatever I wanted. It didn't matter. But as soon as I added the weight, that's when the strain sort of appeared. Again, it's just going back to that root issue which I described. You need to develop a relationship with understanding how your voice works. And that's important whether you have a coach or not. Because if you don't have a coach, you've got to you know, figure it out yourself, right? Intuitively. But even if you have a coach, imagine how much more progress you're going to make if you're making critical gains and understanding how your voice works in the meantime before you actually go and spend time with them. Like, think about that for a second. You might make four times faster results, five times faster results if you're the type of person to analyze and figure out what's going on with your voice because you'll have so much more to really delve into, you know? Now, just because I showed you me singing the first verse doesn't mean I'm done with the song. I want to show you the bridge because it is a quite difficult bridge. It goes up pretty high and it stays up there pretty high. And if you're not ready for it, your voice will break. So this is me just experimenting in my room. You're asking me, will my love grow? I don't know, but I don't know. You stick around, now it may show. I hope you can excuse the mistakes, but basically what the key issue is here is that I was yelling to get the note, and then I even tried to go a bit softer because I could kind of recognize, oh, I think I'm going a bit too loud into the sound. Stick around, now it may show. I don't know, but I don't know. So you see there, I actually tried to go a bit lighter because in my head I was thinking, Damn, I'm going a bit too loud, like it shouldn't sound like this. And even before that, you heard me go, stick, stick. That's my rock sound coming through into the ballad. And that's not something you really desire, you know what I mean? You, you shouldn't want to get a rock sort of sound when you're trying to sing the ballad. So, yeah, just issues. There are just issues with it. And that's why you need to take the time, analyze it, listen to your recordings, and move on. I'll show you how much progress I made on that bridge. So I'm about to play about 10 seconds of the clip of me right before I recorded the cover, like a week before I recorded the cover. And you can hear that it's very smooth actually. You stick around, now it may show. Cool. So one thing that actually allowed the high notes to get up there without having to yell and push so much was that I was going too dark when I was recording it in my bedroom. So have a listen to this. You're asking me, will my love grow? I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know. I thought that by darkening it, that it would kind of keep the body in full powered sound, but I couldn't hear how it was coming across, you know, from the recorder's point of view, like the audience's point of view. And then here on the I don't know, I don't know, I purposely went, I don't know, I... I don't know. And that was something that I really um, maintained throughout so that I could do it on the cover that I did a week later. Let 
So you can see how I really, really focus on the brightness in that. And that was one thing that allowed it to just kind of soar up there. I also noticed after, you know, the, the time I spent practicing it, I actually needed to warm up a certain part of my range before I could get up there easily. If I did not warm up, I could still get there, but it wasn't really floating, you know what I mean? It was like this very, kind of like the sound that I had back in September when I recorded it, like a deep, dark sound that I was kind of just pushing up. It almost sounded like when you just wake up and sing. And that's not really what we, you know, ideally want. Okay, so let me just quickly say this. How much did I practice? How much did I really practice? Now, I would say I wasn't that consistent for a long time until the end of November into December for about three and a half weeks or four weeks. And I practiced about four times a week and it was about an hour or two each session. That might sound like a lot, but it's just how much I required because it's really hard to change your technique once it's been kind of solidified. And again, I felt like I had to spend extra time with this song, not only just to do the basic stuff like learn the lyrics and um, get the song up to a performance quality, but I kind of felt as if it was just a difficult song for me to sing as a rock singer going from a very staccato sort of sound, which I usually use, to a very nice smooth legato sound. That was a big challenge. You heard it on the word stick. Remember, in the September version, I went, you stick, like that. And then by this cover, I'm going, you stick around. Much, much more smooth. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen the cover of my song for something, what are you waiting for? Make sure to hit subscribe if you hadn't. And if you really love this video, please click that notification bell because, yeah, I'm going to be delving really into this quite in-depth content. So make sure to go to my website. You can check out plans for lessons. I've got more written blogs. I've got a written blog for this episode. And yeah, just make sure to keep following me. Keep up to date. You can send me an email and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.